Hi there, my name is Kiana and I am one of the Speed Art Museum's teaching artists with the Art Detectives program. I'll be taking you on a virtual journey through our education collection. Before we get to see those objects, I want to ask you a couple of questions. Have you ever been to the Speed Art Museum in person before? And if you haven't, have you ever been to a place like the Speed Art Museum? Think about the objects that you saw there. Were there paintings or sculptures? Today, I'll be giving you some examples of how you can be an art detective with me. With these objects, we will be doing three things. The first thing is that we will observe these objects. So we'll just look at it and on first glance, think about some different things about it, some of the first things you notice. The second thing we'll be doing is we will investigate the object. I will be handling the object for you to see and we'll be looking at tiny details. You will be able to look at this object the same way our art handlers and curators do when they put them in our museum. And the third thing we'll be doing together is discussing. I will ask you some questions about the objects that you saw and we'll talk about how they were made, what they were made of, what they were used for, where they were from, things like that. Before we get to see those objects, you might be wondering why I'm wearing these gloves. That is because I will be physically handling the objects, and if I wasn't wearing the gloves, the oils on my hands could damage the objects. It could break them down over time or change the paint color. So we put on these gloves when we're handling objects in the museum to keep them safe. Okay, let's get started. We are exploring Discover Native American Cultures today. The first object that we will be looking at together is this one. Upon first glance, what does this object look like to you? Check out the texture here. This is a drum made by contemporary artist William Lottie. Contemporary means that he is still making art for us today. But as you can see here, you notice this material, we can tell that the artist is still using some traditional technique in the making of this drum. In Cherokee culture, drums are played at social gatherings and ceremonies. Drums are very respected and are believed to have a spiritual meaning. This drum is particularly special because it blends the past with the present. As I mentioned, Lati used traditional methods to make our contemporary drum and keep his cultural practice alive. What do you think this material is exactly? If we look at it closely, it looks sort of like materials we see today, but a little bit different, right? Now the covering on this drum is made out of elk skin. It's pulled very tight so we get that drum sound. And that is our drum. The next object that we will be taking a look at is this object. What does this look like to you when you first glance at it? Looks like you could wear it, right? Looks like a shoe. This is called a moccasin. If 
you notice the texture right here, we can see that this isn't made out of the same material we make our shoes out of anymore, right? This is deer hide. And if we take a look at the bottom, this is really thick so it can protect the bottom of your feet. Now, depending on where the person was from, the bottom of the moccasin would either be tough like this or soft like this. So we know that this person was from somewhere where there was maybe a lot of rocks on the ground. And if you notice this beading here, these glass beads were introduced to the Native Americans by the European settlers and they would trade things to get these glass beads. And then we can see that the moccasin has now been personalized, right? How would you decorate yours? Would you do small beading like this? Or maybe beading all over the moccasin? So it was completely covered? Would you do one color or two? Maybe multiple colors, depending on what was available to you? And that is our moccasin. The last object that we will be seeing together is this object here. Now this, have you ever seen anything like this before? Maybe standing up like that. This is called a totem pole. And the totem pole originates from the Pacific Northwest this one was made around the 1950s. Totem poles were used for memorials or to tell a story or to tell family history. Actual totem poles can get up to 60 feet tall. Could you imagine a 60 foot totem pole in your school or in our museum? This particular totem pole is made from cedar wood, which is likely from that region. If you look very closely, you can see the wood grain here. The poles were made out of natural materials so that eventually, over lots of time, they would disintegrate and give back to the earth. Why do you think the artist used these particular animals? What does this animal look like to you? Maybe an eagle, you can see the beak and the wings here. What do you think this is telling us? Was this maybe the artist's family? If you made your class or your family or your friends into a totem pole, what would you use to tell your story? What animals would represent you and each different member? Maybe like this, the eagle for bravery or freedom. That is our totem pole. Together, we've learned how the indigenous people told their stories and how they used music in their religious traditions. Did you learn something new about Native American cultures today? Remember when I asked you to think carefully about your personal totem pole? Well, that was because you were going to get to create your own. Think about what animal would represent you and your family members, friends, or classmates. Maybe a lion for bravery or a cheetah for speed. For this activity, you will need a pencil, colored pencils, and perhaps a pencil sharpener. Find the template and a few examples on the Art Detectives page on the Speed Art Museum's website. Great job, Art Detectives. I hope you learned something new and you have some ideas for creating your own work of art inspired by the objects you saw today. If you enjoyed observing and discussing these objects, please come visit us at the Speed Art Museum where you can see objects from all around the world.
Thank you so much for being an art detective with me today.